Hello, we are worldwide. My name is Travis with Oscar Mike Radio number 212 on October 22nd, 2020, as we wind down this dumpster fire of a year. But it's hot right now because I have Army veteran, coach, and overall awesome person, Heather Hargrove with me. Heather, welcome to Oscar Mike Radio. Well, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Really am. Um, you know, I have been checking you out uh, with uh, JP's, uh, you know, Veterans Business Hour, and you talked about coaching and what you do in that regard, and I'm, I'm interested in learning more about that. I think it's very cool, but I wonder if you start us off with telling us a little bit about yourself, you know, your background and what you did in the Army, and we'll go from there. Oh, yeah. So I'm from Miami originally. So I am a a Floridian that still lives in Florida, which is pretty amazing these days. Um, But I did join the army um, after 9-11. So I served from 2002 to 2006. Um, Did two tours in Iraq. Um, I was stationed out of Fort Stewart, Georgia. So if anyone knows, we ride the Marne train. So we just keep deploying. Um, I was a track vehicle mechanic, um, so did not think that out very well when it comes to transferability into uh, the civilian workforce. However, I've always been one to uh, take on jobs that most men think women can't do just to prove them wrong. So track vehicle mechanic was it. (laughs) Um, And then, yeah, when I got out, I did what we were told our generation should do. I went and you know, to college and started making babies. And, you know, um, after a bachelor's degree in accounting and a master's in public administration um, and plenty of student loan debt that nobody can ever make enough money working, you know, for anybody else to pay off. Um, I eventually got the entrepreneur bug. I apparently had it in me the whole time. It was just finding the right outlet. And yeah, when I found Russell Brunson by chance, um, who's the owner of ClickFunnels, I just started watching his videos and just quit my job two months later. And I've been going ever since. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So yeah. let's just recap a little bit. Working on, you know, track vehicles like the Bradley M1, there's not like a plethora of, of jobs in the civilian market for that? No. And it wasn't the, um, the Bradley or the M1 because those were specific because of the fact that they were for the tankers, but more of like the Hercules, the 113s and stuff like that. Nothing that had, you know, any kind of huge ammo like that comes like nothing that the tankers were driving um, as far as that. But like the Hercules, the 113. And then basically when you're in the motor pool, you fix, you fix anything that's broken. So then you became like just a wheel vehicle mechanic or a generator mechanic or a, Hey, I don't know how to, you know, fix the doorknob on my door mechanic. It was kind of like, you know how to fix stuff, just do it. So you go in there to prove a point and something tells me you don't do things halfway there, Heather. I mean, you could have picked anything else, but you, you go, you go, you go full throttle when you, you go after something. When you got out, you, you mentioned that you did what you were, quote, supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And, you, and you, you go to school. You're, you're very educated. You're more educated than me. Let me ask you something. Did, did that not like, give you a sense of accomplishment? Or was it just something lacking that kind of pushed you toward entrepreneurship? It was very unmotivating. Um, it was, and this was a big issue that I had in the army as well, which is why I did the four years and was like, I can't stay with you guys anymore. Like I'm going to have problems is I'm a strategic person. I kind of like to see the way that things are working. And then I try to make them better. Um, and in the army, it was always like, we can't do it that way. Cause this is the way we've done it for years. And I'm like, but it just doesn't make sense. If we just do this one thing, you know, like, but yeah, Um, so the same thing, you know, like when I went to school was cause I figured that's what I needed to get a job. That's what I was always taught. And I was like, Oh, let me get into accounting. Cause my dad was an accountant. My aunt was a forensic accountant and I just always did school was always easy for me. Um, so did that then realized that accounting is completely boring and I did not want to do that. Um, and I didn't have the entrepreneurial bug then, or else I would have been thinking of, all right, great. I can sell my QuickBooks services and, you know, create my own company off of that. I just, wasn't, I was just checking the boxes to get done. Um, I was working in sales jobs throughout all of that sales and customer service. So those are great skills to have across the board. So I was already working at the same time of going to school. Um, and then 
while I was working too, same thing. Like I've worked myself out of jobs because I've organized it so much and automated it that they haven't needed me anymore. They're like, this is great. We're going to give you a big check and we're going to let you go. I'm like, okay. Um, and then the same thing happens in the workforce. Like, especially like I was in logistics, um, which is a very male dominated industry with a bunch of very young people in it. Um, I was the second oldest person and I'm 38 now. So when I was working there, I was the second oldest person in the office. Like it was straight out of college people. And once again, the strategies, the way that they were doing things, I was like, there's no rhyme to your reason. Like, I don't understand why, how you guys are like growing. Like, what are you doing right now? Um, so I just realized that I worked better on being able to implement things that I wanted to do. <laughs> I'm like, I want to learn and implement and I want to keep going. It's very interesting that you say that because even if you don't go in the military, there is a school of thought that you are, you are less, I wouldn't say less of a person, but it's almost put that way because you don't have a college degree because you aren't trying to pay down massive amounts of student loans, mm -hmm. or you're not trying to find a way to default on your student loans without um, it impacting you. And I, I see a lot of people, I mean, you know, we're, we're, in the same demographic and there's people I know still paying off loans 20 years later and it's yeah. had an impact on your life. So you, you do all this and something came to a point where you're like, you know, I'm done. Yep. What was that? Like I'm done moment, you know, forget this. I'm going to go and to the wild blue yonder. Um, well, the last position that I had was, um, with a software development company. So I left the logistics world to go help sell software, de um, software development services. Um, and traveling was great and everything like that. And as usual, I was doing great, but the micromanagement in the company got to me to the point where, cause it was work from home position. So they were like, you need to send this many emails and log this much in Salesforce and this many notes and da, 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 da. I'm like, but I'm closing more than everybody else. I'm getting you the sales. That should be all that fucking matters. Right. That should be like the thing. And they started to put people on and it was nuts on this zoom thing. So it was like punishment. If you weren't meeting your metrics, right, you had to log into the shared Zoom room where somebody at corporate was going to stare at you on the camera and you had to share your screen so they can see all your, what you're doing the whole time. And I avoided that for a long time because I was hitting my numbers, but they kept increasing what the touches that they wanted. And I was just like, no, like, I'm not going to keep doing more stuff to bother the people that I'm working just because you want another email to go out. Like, it's just not happening. And I would rather spend more of my time prospecting larger clients and doing all these different things. So eventually they tried to get me on that thing. I refused. <laughs> I was like, I'm just going to continue doing my job. This was in no way what we discussed upon hiring. I'm doing, my numbers are great, da, da, da. And you keep upping the game as far as the time. I'm like, I'm not playing the game. And then eventually they were like, okay. And like locked me out and sent me my stuff. And I was like, perfect. Great. <laughs> now I got fired. So unemployment. Oh, I'm kidding. Um, so then I was just like, it was just very unmotivating the way that leadership viewed their people. And that's why even when I hire on people that work with me on different things, I'm like, I'm not about your hours. How much can I pay you to produce this product? Whether you finish it in five minutes or in one day or whatever, I don't care. What's the value to me and how much, you know, do you want to charge me for it? Like, that's the way it should be. And it was just corporate America was just like, I was dying inside. It's not creative. It doesn't flow. And it's just like this micromanagement of stuff. And I was just like, ah, I couldn't breathe. Yeah, I'm checking, I'm checking out, I'm just, I, I want to pick your brain for a second. I'm checking out this book called Bullshit Jobs. Okay. <laughs> Right. And, you know, a lot of those, the jobs they talk about are the people that, you know, get on the Zoom and are watching everything you're doing and yeah. measuring everything mm -hmm. where you have individuals like yourself who are producing. And then you have the individuals who watch, observe and, and digest everything they do and try to, you know, add more in there as they add value. And I often thought, man, what a soulless existence that is. How is that satisfying to do all that, right? Am, am, yeah. I, am I wrong? No, it's, and I just can't, to me, like, I just want to know what's going on in there. You know, like, 
what value does that give for them, right? Like if, if you have to micromanage somebody to that point, just get rid of them. Like if they're not producing, like don't pay somebody to sit there and do that. Like how much money can you save? Um, and then you kind of take away the creativity part of it. Like let people have fun and let them own the position that they're in. Let them find strategies. And if I can automate what I'm doing and if I can do better and get more done in two hours and somebody can in eight hours, don't penalize me because I'm better at what I do and try to get me to add on more stuff. And that was another thing too. And that's why even when I take on clients or like, am I paying you hourly? I'm like, hell no. <laughs> I am not an hourly anything to anyone anymore. Um, so, and it's just, yeah, I, you would think people would want, cause if you give people the ability to take on something and you just trust in them to do it, they're going to do amazing things. And if they don't, then you try to coach them up and motivate them and kind of get them going, but eventually it just might not be for them. And then you move on. The micromanagement stuff is how businesses like slowly just like dwindle or their turnover rate is just atrocious. And then you read all the reviews about the company that employees are posting online. And all you hear is micromanagement, always doing this, always. And that's like the worst thing ever. And that's also why the people that are in my life that are still looking for it, because they're, they're more comfortable with the comfort of working for somebody else. And I get that entrepreneurship isn't for everybody. That is fine. But I keep telling them, I'm like, if you're going through this interview process or their stuff and it's like, they're asking for things or they want you to do certain things, like that's not the company for you. And that's okay. Like somebody that I knew was like, Oh, like he, um, from the logistics company, he's like, yeah, now I'm looking for another job. So now I got to go back to college and da, 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 da. I'm like, dude, if you're looking for something similar and they're telling you they want a degree, um, that they want a degree and you are that I'm like, that's not for you. I'm like, find the company that wants your skill set, that wants your knowledge, that wants, you know, what you can bring to the table and not a piece of paper where most people don't even pay attention in class. Anyways, I'm like, it just doesn't happen. So, so you come to this realization and then you meet Russell, the, this, this click funnels now mm -hmm. for me and for other people, I kind of know what click funnels are because for other things that I do, but kind of explain to us what click funnels means to you. All right. So it's not as much as click. So it's more funnel hacking. That would mean something to me. Click funnels is a platform. It's, you know, a software as a service. It's, uh, almost similar. If you think like a website builder, it's a drag and drop, but it's a sales funnel. So you're not sending people to a website with multiple things. It's saying here, click on this link and it goes to a single option. So if like you said, Hey, I just put out a new podcast, right? Do you want to listen to it? They can click on the link. It takes them to a single page where it says new podcast is out. This is what it's about. Drop your email here and get instant access to it. And they put in their email. Now you have their email. They hit submit and it takes them to wherever your podcast lives, right? It's taking them through a single action because people tend to get exhausted on websites and they leave. If you send them to your website, they're going to click around. They're not going to do anything. So um, it's more of like the funnel hacking lifestyle. So what funnel hacking means is stop trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, stop trying to do everything yourself. Like, first of all, if anybody ever says to you, oh my God, it's been done before. Like, oh, or so many people are doing it. Like, just ignore that person wholeheartedly. There's so many people in this world. The, 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 the fact that I'm, I'm going to have certain people in my network that you don't have is hundred percent. Like it's just, is what it is. So you can have something very similar to what I'm doing. It's like saying like McDonald's shouldn't open up down the street from the other McDonald's they're both going to get busy, right? Like you have to keep that mindset. So is that why like up here in the Northeast CVS and Walgreens open up right next to each other? Kind you got to, people are going to have their favorites. I go to Walgreens. I am not a CVS fan. <laughs> but the same mindset applies. It's not yeah. like, okay, okay. Yeah. So, but there's so many people in this world. So just some like, so what funnel hacking is it's, depending on what you do, if you see somebody with a good funnel, right? Like it, usually if I see an ad pop up on my Facebook, I'm going to click on it if it's interesting to me or if it's something that pertains to stuff that I do. And most likely you're going to land on their sales page, which is their funnel. First of all, if they're running an ad to it, it, sh it should be pretty decent. It should be converting. I usually look to see how long they've been running the ad as well. I, this is what you learn. You learn to investigate the process. 
How is their sales page set up? What are they offering? Okay, great. Like, what are their ups? So it's, it's kind of just looking at what people have that are, are successful before you and making it your own and going with it. So it's, it's but, not but, trying uh, to reinvent the wheel. Say again? Yeah, but, but so wait a minute. Now, here's, here's where I get a little like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I mean, if I'm copying somebody else's stuff, it's, it's no longer my thing, right? But you're not, you're not copying their stuff. Okay. So educate me here. What am I missing here? Because I'm like, I you're, hear that you're, you're seeing what the process. So let's say if they're, if they have a good, so let's say somebody else has a, a funnel that's something to do with a podcast, right? Okay. And you want to, you're like, Oh, this is great. They're getting people to their podcast. And this is how look at how their sales page is set up. If they have a picture up on the top left, you're like, Oh, great. I should do a, a picture up there. Right. It's your picture. And then it's, but this is the way it is. It's like having, if you look on any website or anything, the top left is your highest place of conversion. And that's everybody that knows a website. Your eyes start at the top left, yep. go to the right, down to the bottom, right, down to the left. There's an image on the top left. That's where your image should be. It's also, if there's bold words, okay, great. What are they putting in there? It's not like, oh, hi guys. Do you want to know? It's like, grab this, da, da, da. it's you're learning the process and everything is duplicatable. There are people that just give away their funnels. They don't care. You're still adding your own words and your own product to it. You still have to make your own thing, but I can have a five steps coaching framework for new coaches. And so can Lisa, Sarah, Beth, Angela sitting over there. It doesn't matter because it's my five steps. Those are her five steps. Just the same way you have Zoom and what other, other, other platforms are out there. You have Facebook and all the other social media sites. You have a ton of funnel building softwares, a ton of Chrome extensions that do the same thing, a ton of veterans podcasts that are out there. They're all different in their own way, but you have to see what strategies are working. I'm not going to look at Joe Schmo that's just starting out his website and try to copy what he's doing, I'm going to be like, okay, what website in my field has been up forever that they have it down? You can tell what their customers want. Like you start to see, okay, great. Like if they're doing this, oh man, they must, that's what you should be doing. You have to research. It's like in a textbook, they take work examples of things that have worked for businesses in the past you read the work example, now go apply it to your real world. Now you just have faster access to it. It's getting out of that mentality of it's copying. It's not copying. Now, if you take their work product and their funnel and change nothing of it, that's copying. But you should be seeing what people want. Just the same way as if people are buying right now certain t-shirts great. What t-shirts are going off the shelf? Okay. Maybe I'm going to add a different image, a little different verbiage, but I know this is the subject area that people want right now. And you create something of your own to go with that. So it just depends on the industry that you're in and what you're selling. So, so it's not really imitation is flattery. It's, it's using what works. It's inspiration. Oh, inspiration. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. So it's, it's finding what is working and not reinventing the wheel because there's no point in that whatsoever. So this is obviously you, 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 you did the college thing, you did the work thing in corporate America. Now you're doing your thing. And, you know, ladies and gentlemen, when you, when you listen to Heather on these uh, veterans or business um, zoom talks or shows, the, the passion comes through like, like this is your thing. You know, why, why, why did this really connect with you and resonate as your thing and become your drive? Um, it wasn't immediate because when I started, I, I had no clue any of this. I had never been on, like done any social media marketing, email marketing. Like I just went all in and I've been learning ever since with, with the majority of it, there's free stuff online pay for what you need and then definitely get a coach, like find somebody who's doing what you want to do or that can help you in certain areas. But I definitely recommend that. But um, just over time, just you see when you're going. And this is the thing. People try to wait for it to be perfect before they go. So I just started going and you start to see what you enjoy doing and what you don't. And then what you do is you, you go deeper into the fun stuff. So whereas I like the strategy and implementation of social media and stuff like that and how to, how to bulk produce it, how to schedule it out and do all that, I like doing it for me. 
and I like teaching people how to do it for them. I don't want to be making your social media posts for you. That's not my fun part. So I realized that's out. Um, and then just over time, you see what people want to pay you for. So at some point people were like, Heather, like, first of all, your energy, they're like, can I just get that? Um, and then also when they talk to me, their eyes open up and it's just like the strategy and these things. And so people want, started to be like, listen, I need somebody to basically help me out with, you know, strategizing the automation, the tactics, and just help me with my accountability. Keep me honest with myself because I'm the one that'll be like, so did you do what I told you to do? We did this, right? Like, did you do that? Um, so that's when the coaching aspect came along and, you know, being a strategist for them, because I like to learn everything and I'm still learning, like I'm learning Pinterest now. And then I also, I'm still learning chatbot automation. So I have that under my tool belt as the basics, but I want to learn more. And then there's text messaging automation triggers follow. Like there's so much out there. So I enjoy the learning. And then I love figuring out what people do in their business. And then hoping them kind of tweak it and adding in my knowledge. I mean, like, hey, this would be a good thing to implement. Here's what you can do. Now go do it. Instead of them having to learn everything that's out there themselves, I can point them in the right direction. Because it's like a puzzle. I love it. I get to fix it. So you mentioned that before. You really said earlier in 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 the conversation that you can't do it all by yourself. Mm -hmm. Do you feel people fall in that trap before they come to you that they they've tried doing it themselves or burn out or they've just hit a roadblock. They can't get past. Um, usually it's they're they're getting burnt out. They're too busy working in their business to see the big picture of the outside of it. So a lot of my clients have already been selling something, right? Like they know what they want and they have customers and they're comfortable selling it, but now they have clients. So now what, like, how do we keep them? How do we automate the process? How do we do better on the front end? Like the different things. So they're just ready to stop working in their business because when you're an entrepreneur, you shouldn't be working in your business. The point is to get you working out of the day-to-day operations. so You can be strategic with the big picture. So if you're constantly working in your business and not putting in strategies into place and ways to then be able to, you know, streamline and get other people on there, help them out. What do you outsource? What do you automate? then they're constantly stuck and you can't grow. Like you're exchanging your time for money and it's not going to work out for you. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I have to figure that you have more than just like you're, you're veteran yourself, but you deal with more than just veteran based businesses. You also deal with just business in general. Is there anything though, you know, cause we're a veteran show here. Is there anything that, that a veteran can apply to the aspect of entrepreneurship that you have learned from civilians. I think a lot of times we as veterans miss that, that, you know, just because that guy didn't serve, um, there's lessons that they can still teach us about, you know, being a civilian. Yeah. Um, First off, you, you need to learn networking. You know, veterans, a lot of time we are in a rank structure, like you don't talk to people that are above you. Like you, like you just, you have a ways to talk. You're not used to going into communities or conversations and having these open dialogues and just being the person. Right. Um, so you need to learn networking skills, whether it's, you know, just going to events, the civilians are great at it. Cause that's what they're taught. Um, veterans aren't really taught how to communicate and stuff like that. Um, so with networking, um, emotional stuff. Um, so just kind of, learning to be cognizant of emotional triggers, the way that people communicate, um, not being as formal, you know, like relax, calm down. It's okay. Um, you know, like, and if anything, just kind of watch, you know, your body and stuff like that. But the more you do it, the more you'll pick up on it and just pay attention. That's the biggest thing that I think veterans have a great way. Like we have this honed sense of like paying attention to our surroundings, right? Because that's what we have to do to survive. When you're at places or when you're doing things, pay attention to your surroundings, pick up on things that, you know, you might not have known previously. And then you'll, you'll just start to implement what you need for your business. Don't try to do it all. Just do what you need at this time and add on later. So, so here's something I'm asking for a freebie here. <laughs> is, well, well, it's a two part question. Um, a lot of, a lot of my fellow vets and, and myself included, you know, I, I sometimes see networking as a complete waste of time. The last thing I want to do is take my three hours and 150 bucks 
and go sit there and, you know, hand out business cards and press a flesh and then realize that, you know, no one really interacted with me or, or cared about it. And, and I've been told that's wrong. I'm not the only guy who feels that way, but it just comes off that way. It's like, wait a minute, what am I going to, that's billable time. I could have done something else with, you know, am I, am I, am I, you know, how do I adjust my thinking according to what you're saying, Heather? Um, well, networking has always been great for me. Um, so I can't complain, but you have to think of networking as different levels. So there's social networking. So you should be in Facebook groups networking. You should be online networking. Like stop looking at your phone like you are a consumer and start being the producer of the content. Have a strategy when you're on there. There's social networks. Network online if that's, you know, more something that you're comfortable with and it's getting into that action as well. Um, networking events, I pick and choose which ones I want to go to. I know which ones, you know, I'm going to, and a lot of times it's more because I just want to get out of my house. Like I'm at home all the time with two kids. Like, please, can I get adult conversation? Um, and I don't bring business cards. People are like, Heather, do you have business cards? I'm like, no, because we're digital. Like, don't give me a piece of paper. Like, I don't want it. I'm just going to put it away. Um, I would rather stand there and book a call with you right then or connect on LinkedIn or Instagram or Facebook, wherever, you know, you're at. Um, so I'm not a big fan of business cards, but partnerships are a big thing with networking. So networking, don't think of it just as the one-to-one of, first of all, don't go in there looking to close a client. Like it's, that's not what you're there for. Um, you're there to connect. You're there to learn what other people do. Who knows who you might find to send to somebody and then they're so grateful they send somebody to you or you build this relationship. Um, a lot of partnerships have come from me networking. A majority of that over the last year has been online, but I went to Funnel Hacking Live, um, which is this huge event it, um, over, what was it, five days in Nashville. Um, met somebody there who invited me to a mastermind, which connected me to other people, which now got me some clients. But like you take... If you do one thing, like for me, like if I do a specific thing and let's say like my clients want somebody to have, you know, sales funnels built or graphics made, like I have a guy and then I have another guy. And then if they need somebody to help them with something else, I, you build partnerships so you can package stuff kind of together. So that way you're not doing everything in your business. So if you're not an email automation person, but you know, your clients are going to come to you and want emails and you're like, I don't write content. You better have a guy and it doesn't have to be you hiring somebody and being an, having an employee. It could be like, who do I know that is great at this? Okay, great. How much do they charge or what can I work with them? And then how much can I mark it up to my client? And you just pass it off. So it's building partnerships so everybody can leverage each other's skill sets to grow together. Okay. All right. You know, duly noted. <laughs> But, well, it just sounds like, it just sounds like, right, that it's, it's the old death of a salesman, you know, uh, mentality where it's, it's who you know. Yeah. And if they maybe not like you is not the right word, but definitely respect your expertise enough to partner with you. Yeah. So there's a, there's a, there's a trust factor there and there, there's some kind of interpersonal thing going on. I think that's overlooked sometimes. Um, so I'm going to tell myself a little bit, Heather, I have been told several times that I'm extremely direct and I'm like, well, I just don't have time to sit there and, you know, write a, a five paragraph, you know, paper on, you know, one paragraph's request. You know, I, I don't like long meetings. I don't even like meetings. I mean, right. uh, I, I want, I want to talk to you, understand what you need, make sure that, you know, I, I can tell my team what's needed and then move on and execute it. Um, but it's been communicated to me that that might be counterproductive in certain areas might need to be softened up a little bit. I don't, I don't know if that's right, but it's my style and it works in so many other areas that I'm not sure if I'm going to change. You don't have to change. Um, so (laughs) um, the biggest thing is once again, you need to have that abundance mindset. The amount of people that are in this world and you attracting the people that, you want to attract, right? So like, I don't want people attracted to me that I don't want to work with. If I can't be myself and who I am, like, I would rather you not want to work with me. Just the way I've had other people where I try to streamline, like, um, they, they want to go back and forth to me about a calendar thing. And like, 
a booking time and I send them a link and they never book and I follow up. They're like, yeah, I decided. I'm like, okay, great. Like you wanted to take the ease out of booking stuff and you're a back and forth person. Can we check? And did I'm like, I can't deal with that. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm like, that's fine. I don't want you as a customer anyways. Cause you're going to make me work the hard way. Just the same way as if you know, Gary Vaynerchuk, he's lost plenty of business in ways where he can get on to, you know, do things because he curses. He's not going to change the fact that he curses. It's who he is. You attract the people that you want to work with by being yourself. And that's the only thing that matters. And you have to, and you're, you, you, you scrunch, like you have to have the abundance mindset. If you don't, you really, really need to work on that because that mindset alone will hold you back if you don't go get it. Because then everything is a negative and not a positive. And if you go into it as a negative, it's never going to turn into a positive. So, well, that, that is something I'm working on as you picked up because of one, what I do professionally, uh, it's not an abundance mindset, is definitely a risk averse, scarce mindset. And it's done that way for a purpose. Um, but uh, this is where it gets interesting for me right now is Oscar Mike Radio is really about abundance. Yeah. And, and changing my thoughts there. And it's really weird. I, I might scrunch, I might, ugh. But on the other hand, it works. You mean, you're not, you're not, you're selling me a line here because whenever I have said yes, or, you know, I'm going to give you this, you know, and not, you know, charge you or not that I charge anyway, but people have asked, you know, do you charge for appearances? I'm like, no. Uh, you know, will you do this for me? I'm like, yes. So much good stuff has happened. Mm -hmm. And maybe not right then, Heather, but, you know, six months from now, I get an email saying, hey, you did this for this person six months ago. Yep. I mean, I really like that. So I know it works. It's just very hard for me to get in that in my whole life. Yeah. That's where I'm at right now. It's, it's so liberating when you do like, it's just people are always like, Heather, you're always, I'm like, I'm always happy. Like if something even happens, I'm like, it's going to be fine. Like I could be down to nothing and this be like, Oh yeah, money's just going to come. It's going to be great. And then somebody closes and pays my high ticket all in one payment after one call. Like you have to go into it knowing that there's so much out there. Same thing as if you're producing content. You know, when you're like, oh, other people have seen stuff like this. Who cares? They haven't seen your stuff like that. And most likely, no. Just because you see it, if you've watched The Social Dilemma, you probably look for things like that. So you constantly see it. They don't. And if your friends happen to see it, they're not in there looking, you know. So you just have to realize there's so much out there in the world. The fact that people aren't all out there making money is just ridiculous. Like, there's so many people out there. Like you can come up with, and when you just break it down, I can, if you can come up with something like a digital course that you sell for nine ninety seven, right? $997. You make it once it lives there digitally. You sell it to a hundred people a year. That's almost a hundred thousand dollars a year. You're making selling to a hundred people, a hundred people. That's it. That's all the people in all the billions and like of people that you have to find that want to buy whatever it is that you're selling for nine ninety seven a year. You're making a hundred K a year, barely any overhead because it's a digital online course, unless you start investing into it and doing ads and other things. But I'm like, it's when you break that down and people are like, oh, but I need to do this. And like, no, like I have never sold anything. Like I've never made a product before I sold it. I have never made a product before I sold it. Why? Because I am not going to make something just to find out that nobody wants to buy it. And it's perfectly fine. Like people buy it. Wow. That's, yeah. That's way against my background. I mean, oh, the product yeah. is made, tested, retested, focus group. What products are you making, testing, and retesting? Well, I mean, in, in my, my, my professional life, personally, yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I, I, I hate doing this too because I'm still in, in, in the concept phase. I got, um, I'm making greeting cards. Okay. Physical or digital? Physical and digital. Okay. But but the idea is, you know, uh, I'm not going to, you know, pay China 11 bucks for green cards anymore. I got I got upset about that. I'm like, I can make my own. And sure enough, I, I've got a couple of copies that I'm kind of proud of, actually. Okay. So. The, what's the turnaround on how long from an order to people? I'm not even to that point. I, because 
I'm in the mindset that the product has to be solid before I even think about yeah. showing this thing. To somebody. You can do a mock-up. You're or just, you do a single, or you do a single, because what happens if you make it and then all of a sudden nobody buys it? Like same thing with shirts. Like I have people that want to go and they're like, oh, I want to buy a whole bunch of shirts with this thing on it. I'm like, if you make one damn shirt, that's fine. Put it on, take pictures. Do not buy an inventory of shirts for people that might not buy your shirt. Just because you love it, you're not your audience. That just is what it is. You put out, you put a mock-up, somebody wearing your shirt, you make a sales page, pre-orders now, da, 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 get it at this rate. Prices are going to go up or we're only doing pre-orders up to the first hundred. You, you have to market it because a big thing that people have issues with too is selling their stuff. Just because you build something, I've been making a ton of money and I have no website. I have no sales funnel. I'm just now building out a membership area and stuff because now I have course, like things that I can add value and send people to. People find me on social media. I tell them to Venmo cash app or PayPal me. That's it. And it's just, it works out great. Like my high ticket clients find a social media post. They book a call with me. We get on a call. That's what it is. Same thing with anything I create. It's, Hey, I'm, I have this new thing. This is what it is. Who wants it? Great. Once people actually pay me the money for it, that's when I make it. I am never making anything because then you spend the time making it just to find out that nobody wants it. And then what do you have after that? You have to sell it before you ever make it. Put a mock-up, put it on a page, be like, oh my God, this the holiday or whatever is coming up. Pre-order this now, da 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 you know, and then see if people are actually buying it. Get let them give you feedback on it. So it's not very often this happens, ladies and gentlemen, but I mean Heather has just I mean, whew, my, my I, wow. I mean, you just turn my whole world upside down because I, I have been using a project uh, plan and analysis and measuring everything. And you're saying, forget all that. That's just garbage. Put out the mock-up, see what's, if it works. And if it hits, then create it. Yep. Because you're spending all your time on the front end for something. It's not like... um you're not a brick and mortar, right? You're not no, like, no. I have to go to a bank and I'm just show them my work. business plan to rent out this thing. And then I got to demolish stuff. And I got to know what my launch date, like all like on, that's why I love online. Like you can wake up in the morning and have an idea and go sell it and, and, and see what people want. It's, it's, it's that quick of a turnaround. And then the cool thing is too, you can sell a specific amount of them and then be like, all right, we're done with that card. New card coming out in two weeks. Who wants to check it out when it does? And that's it. You put out the new card. Brand new. And then you add as you need it. I'm speechless right now. <laughs> like, like I, I'm doing the business plan. I'm doing the analysis, this yeah. color, that thing. I, I haven't even, I thought if I could put out Mother's Day cards in 2021, that'd be a good thing. But you're saying in theory, if you were my coach, you'd expect a card like next week. Oh yeah. Or at least you pre, or at least you pre framing it like, Hey, on social media, like, Oh, if y'all didn't know, I'm, I'm working on actually, you know, creating um, greeting cards. I miss the old, you know, da, 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 and like start talking and see what people comment, see who'd actually be interested. Do people actually want to buy cards? Like you have to do the research aspect of it. And then you can start pre posting. You see who's interested and then you start doing little bait posts on like, hey, which one do you guys like? This one or this one? Let the people choose. So by the time you have it, the people have basically chosen what card they want. They're already bought into the process and now they're going to buy. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm speechless, folks. Like, like <laughs> you know, this is a complete 180 from how I usually work mm -hmm. and how I've had success and failure. But I was anticipating a lot of fit. Well, okay. So this isn't about me. Well, we'll I'm, I'm, I'm going to put your words to the test. I, my, my, my promise is to you because you gave this out for free. I'm going to action it. So I'll start tagging some of the stuff I do. Yeah. It hits, it hits. And I can say, you know what? I got it here from Heather. Yep. <laughs> so speaking of that, speaking of that, I mean, because I got one more question, then we'll start winding this down. What's it like when one of your clients comes back to you and says, oh my God, I did everything you told me to do and I was, I was here, but now I'm like, the sky's a limit. What's that like to you when you, when you see that it, it, it's gotta be more than just the money, although the money is important. Yeah. There's gotta be a difference there, right? 
Yeah, it's amazing. Like, and that's why it's so important to work with the right people, which is why I tell people not everyone is your client and that's okay. You can say no and walk away. Um, but my clients, when they're working with me, like these are actually like, these are action takers. These are the people that are ready. Um, and it's funny because they go through these ebbs and flows because they've been so busy in their business that, you know, sometimes it gets boring for them because they're used to the chaos and now we've automated stuff. So I'm like, okay, so what are we adding in? Like we get to add in and it's fantastic. Cause I do the whole picture kind of thing. Like your life has to be good in order for your business to be good. So I'm like, okay, so your significant other needs more time. Let's schedule in a date night. Let's schedule in a day where you get off early. When are you working out? Oh, you're not working out. Do you want to go work out? Okay, great. Well, We're going to put out. that right? Like we're going to put that in there. Do you want to read a book? What else are you doing? Like I have people that are actually like taking on new ventures on top of their actual original business. And now they're creating a secondary business with something else that they know how to do on the side. And it's just beautiful to see when I get on with them, like how excited they are to just like talk to me. And that's what we do. We break it down. We, we address what needs to get addressed and then we fix what we need to. And then we grow. And that's the biggest thing. It's growing. Um, but I love it. And then especially like, because some of the people that I do work with, so I do have a mix of veterans and non and sometimes us veterans. And that's where it's like creating content for me. Some days is not so much fun. So I do batch it on my good days. Um, we have our, you know, our times where we're just not good. We're not okay. And they hit me up with a message when I check on them saying, no, I'm having an off day. And I immediately FaceTime them. <laughs> And we talk real quick and I just do a transference of energy. I'm like, this is what we're going to do. Let's talk it out. And just being able to help them. And it's a different appreciation when you're doing stuff like that for a company, they don't appreciate you. Yeah. When you're doing stuff like that for people that are actually investing in themselves to get better and to help their company grow, that appreciation is shown so much. And it just, once again, it solidifies that you are doing, first of all, what you like to do because you're, you're going all in with it. And it solidifies the fact that like you are putting out something that people really need. And it just makes you feel good to, to know that you've been able to find something that people want. Well, that's amazing. I mean, this whole conversation did, I mean, in, in a very good way, did not go the way I thought it was going to go. <laughs> Well, that's, that's the best part about doing this, right? I mean, when, when I come in with a preconceived notion about how my reality is or what I think about your, you know, you know, value add to not only your self directions community and get completely surprised, that's, that's a very good thing. Um, so without a website, how do people <laughs> contact you? I mean, that, that is, that's, that's, yeah. I, I gotta, I gotta get people in contact with you, Heather. So it's, um, pretty much across all social media platforms. It's at the yeah. Heather Hargrove. So at the Heather Hargrove, um, Facebook is where I'm at the most. I do have LinkedIn and TikTok for my TikTokers. Um, and then you can always email me at hello, hello. at, at by Grove. So just B Y G R O. V E dot com. So I do have that. I do have the email. <laughs> so I'll have the I'll have the email down here below. The video folks should be able to see it. Um she's laid down the challenge. You know, sell it before you make it. I'm I'm going to I'm gonna do this, Heather, because of, of of just where my mind is right now. And if it works, well, when it works. When it works. There we go. When it works. When it, it works. It's, it's going to be a great story. I want to have you back on. Talk about things like TikTok. Um, because it seems to me, last thought here, it seems to me that as a business owner, whether mm -hmm. you're small or large, you almost don't need a, 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 an advertising budget anymore. Correct. You can, you can from yourself, because mm -hmm. you believe in your product, engage with clients for the time it takes to make a TikTok, Instagram post, or social media post. And that resonates with people more than a slick ad campaign. Am I, am I wrong there? So the way, correct on the beginning. So the way when you're starting out with anything, there's so many times you see people that just start and we all do it. Like, we all create a Facebook business page and we boost a post and we get excited about it. 
but you don't have your product yet. You don't know, you know, what people like about it. What, what are their hangups? What, you know, what things you need to, as far as pain points. So when you're starting out, you need to be the seller of your product. You need to go out there and talk about it and connect with people, figuring out, you know, once they purchase, follow up, get those testimonials, get the, you know, the proof of concept. But once your product is moving and you actually have money coming in, then yes, start to put some ad money behind it. Cause now you're not funding out of your own pocket. You actually have income coming in from the product. It's a proof of concept, but you also want to make sure you're strategic about it. So that's where funnels come into play because if you're going to pay money for somebody to click on something and you just send them to your website, what happens if they don't do anything? Right. 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 But then you have to learn. It's just, you get to learn the strategies behind that process and how to create a funnel, how to do an upsell. So that way, every time somebody clicks, your average cart value is going to exceed somebody else's because not only did you get them to buy something, but then you can offer them an upsell. Whether or not they take it is going to be whatever the percentage is and you go through the metrics and all that and it's super geeky and fun. Um, but you determine what, you know, where they're falling. So you can get more for the click. And as long as you're making more, so let's say if you're paying for ads and you're paying a dollar per person that clicks, but you're getting $2 out of it, you're still making money, right? You're still making a dollar over, you know what I mean? So you're spending money on ads, but you're still, and you're, but you're still profitable on it. Gotcha. So it's just getting that, but you have to go and sell your stuff first. And that's where people get so hung up. Like you have to promote your product. And if you're not promoting your product, like the whole if you build it, they will come thing from, you know, like right. it's not, right. it doesn't happen. Like it, there's Ooh. nobody coming to your site. It just doesn't happen. Like I said, folks, I'm going to no, no BS, no, you know, blowing air where the sun don't shine. I'm going to put this to the test now. So when you see this, it'll be October 22nd it is my commitment to Heather for the time Ooh. she's given me to have some stuff out by then. I will tag her in the post. She can tell me if it sucks or not. I don't care. <laughs> but the thing is, I will do it because the original plan was to do this in 2021 around Mother's Day. Heather's saying, forget all that. Like, forget all that. Wad that up. Throw that away. Start now. Yeah. So, Heather, that is my promise to you. I want to thank you so much for coming on uh, Oscar Mike Radio. I look forward to having you back because... I think there's, you know, veterans and civilians and people and moms like yourself who are trying to get their idea to kick and your kind of, of, of perspective and input can mean the difference between something dying on the vine or really thriving. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, folks, um, with uh, the podcast and with Heather's work and everything else, we say mission and flight. We are in flight fully. Thank you again.